Okay, welcome to the first video of our third and final topic that's going to be on your paper this summer, and that is population and settlement. So we're going to start uh, on this uh, introductory video by going over some population theory. First of all, know your key terms, okay? Because for two marks, you might get asked what is meant by the term birth rate, the number of babies born per 1,000 per year. You've got to get in the number, the thousand bit, and you've got to get in the time scale per year. So birth rate, number of babies born per year. Death rate, number of deaths per 1,000 per year. Natural increase and decrease is then the difference between the two. If birth rates are higher than death rates, then the population will go up. More people being born than dying. If the death rate is higher than the birth rate, then the death rate of the population will go down because more people are dying than are being born. Nice and simple, okay? You've also got something called infant mortality, where very uh, important when you're looking at like LEDCs and why you get high birth rates in LEDCs. Infant mortality, the number of babies dying under the age of one per 1,000 per year. You've also got something called fertility rate, which isn't up there. Fertility rate is the number of babies born per woman. So it's a figure like 1.3 or 5.7 or 9.8 in some like African countries. Okay, um, So be aware of the idea of the fertility rate. Something else that you'll need to know then, good old population pyramids. Always popular in the opening part of the exam. Okay, And you'll usually ask to look at the pyramid. You might get one on its own or you might get two different ones. And you'll be asked to like read data off it, and you might be asked to compare like changes over time between two different countries. You might be able to, you might then be asked about what implications this has, which we'll get onto as the video goes through. So if you need asked to comment on like the features of a pyramid, what we've got here is an LEDC pyramid. So it belongs to a less economically developed country. You know that because the very wide base tells you that you've got a high birth rate, okay? The widest part of the pyramid is your younger population. You've also got a narrow top, tells you that you've got a high death rate, and it also tells you that uh, that narrowing pyramid means you've got a lack of economically active people, okay? That's also a common feature of your LEDC, that fewer people live to each of the next age group, okay? So fewer people aged like 45 to 49 than there are aged 40 to 44, okay? Almost people are passing away at every single stage of the pyramid. You've also got that pyramid narrowing um, as age increases tells you they've got a lower life expectancy, okay? Very few people live to old age and so that links in with the idea of a high death rate. People die at every level of the pyramid. Okay, So you might be asked to read off. So remember you've got one side is always males, the other side is always females, and then it breaks it down by age category. 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, and so on and so forth. Either all the way up to 80 plus, or, depending on your population, all the way up to 90 plus. And you'll either have your figure down the bottom, sometimes as a percentage, like it is on here, sometimes in actual millions of people. And you might be asked questions, like, you know, for one mark, uh, how many males aged 15 to 19 are there in country X's population? Okay, um, you know, what is the number of people living to uh, aged 80 to 84? And if it says the number of people, remember that you need to add males to females. Don't slip up on things like that. So that's your LEDC pyramid. Um, don't forget that life expectancy as a term is the average age a person lives to, the average age. Compare that to an MEDC pyramid, okay, where how do you know it's an MEDC pyramid? Because your base narrows, because in MEDCs we tend to have a lower birth rate, sort of year upon year, and so the pyramid gets narrower. How else do you know? It's very wide in the middle, which tells you that life expectancy is high, because actually it's very wide all the way up, okay? Tells you that you've got a lot of economically active people, okay? And it also tells you that you've got a long life expectancy, because obviously the, the, the majority of the pyramid is quite wide. It doesn't start to drop off until sort of 60, 64, and then it gets that sort of decline going year upon year, okay? So be aware of the differences. You might be asked to compare like birth rates and death rates between countries, 
like reading off the pyramid, okay? Um, you know, you might be asked to explain the general pattern or how you know that's an MEDC pyramid. And you have to think about why that is, okay? Which we'll get to later on in the video. So that's your MEDC, uh, MEDC pyramid. So, what does population do overall? Hopefully, you'll remember this idea of the, the demographic transition model. Uh, remembering that countries go through one, two, three, four, five stages of the demographic transition model, okay? Where in stage one, your least developed countries where you've got a very high birth rate and you've got a very high death rate, and they fluctuate. That's why I've got this wobbly line here. And because they fluctuate, that keeps the total population down. It's almost like as many people are being born as are dying. And so the population actually never goes up. As a country begins to develop through stage two and three, the first thing that happens is you get investments in medical care, for example. So fewer people die because they can get cures for diseases. Or you start to get better diets, so fewer people die because that they're eating better, okay? Um, you get an improvement in standard of living, so people live in better, cleaner, more hygienic conditions, so you reduce the risk of disease. So your death rate starts to go down, okay, in stage two. So because your death rate's dropping and your birth rate stays the same, your population starts to go up, okay, starts to increase. As you went to stage three, you then start to see things like the use of contraception being introduced. So people use contraception, so actually the number of babies start to fall. Or you uh, provide better economic like development for people, and so people can get jobs. And therefore, because they get jobs, they actually don't need to have as many children to work. Uh, they're earning their own money, they don't need to have like eight children all going and working for them, okay? So the birth rate drops, but because it drops less than the death rate, the death rate look is now almost started steady off. Your population is still increasing because your birth rate is still higher than your death rate. In stage four, both have now started to come right down. So stage four, your population starts to uh, steady off, okay, starts to plateau. That's a good word to use. Before finally, in some countries in stage five, where you've got an aging population, which we'll get onto in another video, but actually your death rate falls, uh, sorry, your birth rate falls below your death rate. So actually, you've now got more people dying than being born. Your population starts to decrease, okay? So know what the DTM shows, okay? Know what it shows, know what it looks like, and then, okay, be aware of what actually influences why these changes take place, okay? So when you get questions about what can influence birth rate, what can influence death rate, why does population increase, why does population decrease, you need to be talking about things like healthcare, okay? What improvements happen to healthcare to bring down the birth rate and bring down the death rate? Okay, so more, more doctors per person, so more people have access to medical care, better quality hospitals, cures for diseases, use of contraception, okay? Education, you improve standards of education, so therefore people know about the use of contraception, yeah? People know um, about how to like plan a family, okay? Uh, people do better in school, you improve the quality of education so that people do better in school, they get qualifications, they go and get higher paid jobs, again, they need fewer children or they can afford a better quality of life. So they're less at risk of dying from like living in poor living conditions, okay? Uh, economy, providing opportunities for people, providing more jobs and so on and so forth, and lifestyles, okay? People choose to lead different lifestyles. Women choose to go to work rather than be stay-at-home mums, okay? More women do that, birth rate shrinks, okay? Um, same-sex marriages, same-sex relationships. If your country like is, uh, if your country promotes that, okay, and he's happy to say, "Yep, yeah, we are fine with gay marriage, etc." Then that can bring down the birth rate for biological reasons. Let's leave it at that. Okay. So be aware of under the headings of healthcare, education, economy, and lifestyle. Be aware of what can influence birth and death rates. What causes them to go up? and what caused them to go down, and know how that happens in MEDCs and how that happens in LEDCs. So you, I once saw a question about what might happen in an LEDC over time to birth rates 
or death rates. That's where you say, well, because healthcare improves, this happens, okay? Because uh, education improves, this happens. So finally then, a little bit about like what you might get asked, the global picture, okay? Be aware of some key things about global population change. Be aware that population continues to go up across the world, okay? The globe's population is increasing. Be aware, though, that this is happening because of population growth in LEDCs, in less economically developed countries. Quick example, okay, you can see this table. The world birth rate in 2008 was 20.2, okay? That was 11.0 babies per 1,000 people in MEDCs compared to 22.2 in LEDCs, okay? Um, again, in 2020, that, that will fall, but LEDCs will still be higher. So be aware that LEDCs are contributing hugely to overall population growth. And you might get this table, and you, might, you could get a, a table like that, and be asked to pick out key figures, what is the birth rate for, or be asked to compare what will happen over time. Okay, so what have we covered? We've covered key terms, we've covered population pyramids and differences between them, we've covered the demographic transition model, the factors that affect birth and death rates, okay, and then the idea that population growth in the world is increasing, the reason for that is because of population growth in LEDCs.